Since last week, the news headlines coming out of Jerusalem have drastically changed. Last week, John was in the wilderness smoking weed. And this week, John is in prison next, next the next to be beheaded. What is going on in this young man's life? The Associate Press intercepted one of John's disciples who was on his way to Jesus. He was sent by John to specifically find out if Jesus was the Messiah, the one to come after him whose sandals he was unworthy to untie. Facing death, John wanted to know what had his preaching, his anti-establishment actions, had they been in vain or did they herald the Messiah. The news claimed that Jesus did not say yes and leave it at that. It was a more open-ended answer, like it could be yes now, and maybe it could be yes for someone else later on. A few years ago, Barbara Brown Taylor, a preacher, wrote, Blessed are those who do not let the Messiah they are expecting Blind them to the Messiah who is standing right in front of them. The Messiah comes in the times and guises least expected. No yes was recorded. Rather, Jesus referred to the Isaiah's description of the Messiah. The blind will see, the lame will walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear. The dead are raised, and the poor have good news preached to them. This is your proof. John, you decide if I am the Messiah. For John, it was a little unfortunate that Jesus hadn't quoted Psalm 146, where Jesus would have referred to the Messiah as the one when he comes to bring justice for the oppressed. Food to the hungry, the blind see, orphans and widows are upheld, strangers are watched over, and prisoners are set free. Oh, to be free. Although we are not behind bars, next to be beheaded, have we not, do we not, experience the feeling of being arrested and imprisoned and doubtful? John Baptist had doubts. And he sought one answer to set it free. It wasn't about the prison bars or the days left in his life. It was about being part of a covenant story that was centuries in the making. Now, a few centuries later, the news headlines actually do talk about marijuana. News reports abound on the subject of people lost, wandering and purposeless, imprisoned, arrested, and doubtful. People imprisoned in a world where there is blindness, a lack of communication, where people have lost their voice, where inability is practiced more than action, where there are hungry and there are poor, and injustice abounds. That list includes all of us in some way or another. And we are looking for a messiah of sorts, a hero, a champion, a fad, a movement, something that will bring hope. The Associated Press sends out reporters to record what is going on. They're not finding people looking for the Messiah who will bring in the reign of God. Not like John was expecting and anticipating. The Messiah is not found in the world of faith and religion. The question has changed over the centuries. In fact, it's no longer a predominant question. The world's not looking for a Messiah with any connection to God or living purpose and bringing hope through God working through humans. If there was God, why would God get messed up in this world? I came across a story told by Gregory Toll. He tells this story. There was once a man who didn't believe in God, and he was quick to let others know his opinion. However, his wife was a Christian who raised their children with her beliefs. She encouraged them to ignore their father's critical comments. One snowy Christmas Eve, as his wife was leaving their farm to take the children to a Christmas Eve service, 
She asked him to come along. He refused, saying Christmas is nonsense. What kind of God comes to earth as a human? What unrealistic humility. It's ridiculous. So she left with the children, and he stayed home. A little while later, the howling wind called him to look outside. The gentle snow was turning into a blizzard. The thickness of snow had made it hard to see. He returned to his armchair to relax by a crackling fire. And then he heard a loud <laughs> He looked out the window, but he couldn't see anything in the blinding snow. So he put on his heavy coat and he ventured outside to see what was making all the noise. Several yards from his house, he saw a flock of wild geese flapping and aimlessly confused. Apparently, they had been flying south for the winter and had got caught up in the storm. They were stranded on his farm, looking for food and shelter. Evidently, a couple of them had been attracted to the light of his window. The man felt sorry for the geese and wanted to help them. The barn would be a great place to put them. It was warm and it was safe. Surely they would be able to continue the journey the next day. So the man walked over to the barn and opened the doors. He hoped the geese would notice the open barn door and go inside. He waited. But the geese just fluttered around, aimlessly confused. They didn't even seem to notice that the, darn, the barn door was open and safety was available inside. Then the man decided to try to shoot them into the barn, but that just seemed to scare them and they moved farther away. He went into the house and he returned with breadcrumbs to make a trail leading to the barn. They didn't catch on. He was getting frustrated at all his attempts to help. They were failing miserably. Nothing he did could get the geese to go into the barn where they would be warm and safe and comfortable. He explained, why don't they follow me? Can't they see this is the only place where they can survive this storm? He deliberated for a moment and realized that these wild geese would never follow a human. He thought to himself, if only I were a goose, then I could save them. <laughs> then he had a brilliant idea. He went into the barn, got one of his own geese, and carried it in his arms as he circled around the flock of wild geese. Then he released it. The goose flew straight for the barn, through the flock of other geese, and one by one, the other geese followed. He stood silently for a moment as the words he had spoken a few minutes earlier played in his mind. If only I were a goose, I could save them. Then he thought about what he'd said to his wife earlier. Why would God want to be like us? That's absolutely ridiculous. And then suddenly it all made sense. That is what God had done. We were like the geese, blind, lost, imprisoned, perishing. God became human to show us the way. The man at that moment realized the meaning of Christmas. He stood in the midst of a storm with an unusual peace. John the Baptist stood in the prison cell, face pressed to the bars so he could hear the words brought back to him by his disciple who had gone to see Jesus. Jesus told me to tell you, John, to tell you that the blind see, that the lame walk, that the lepers are cleansed, that the deaf hear, that the dead are raised, and that the poor have good news brought to them. And blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. And at hearing the words, John the Baptist, although remaining behind the prison bars, was released. He was set free, no longer arrested, imprisoned, or doubtful. It was in the signs. It was in the actions of the kingdom drawing near. The Messiah was present. God was at hand, and his heart was hope-filled, and his soul was at peace. 